Eve Galair is Misha Michelle Colity. I would like to welcome you all to our first episode of STEM Air Skull, the live online workshop series brought to you by the PDST Primary STEM team. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Timmins. We hope that you all enjoy the next hour and that you will leave this evening's online workshop with some practical ideas and insights into the STEM learning opportunities in our classrooms and beyond. Good evening everyone, my name is Anne Tracy. We are really looking forward to exploring STEM in a bubble with you over the next hour. We hope you all have a really nice cup of tea or coffee ready and that you're able to relax and enjoy the content that we have prepared for you this evening. Dear Eve, it's Misha Marion McLoon. 
We thank you for taking the time to join us this evening after a busy day at work. These are very challenging times for schools and we hope that this online workshop will prove to be helpful, insightful and practical for teachers. I'll now hand you over to Michelle who will take us through the introduction. Thank you so much, Marion. Today's online workshop will take the following format. I will have a look at the key messages for today's workshop and the context for saying. Anne will then guide you through the first section, talk and discussion. After this, Paul will be looking at blended learning in STEM, followed by STEM on a shoestring, where Marion will explore STEM activities which can be completed with limited resources. We will conclude today's workshop by examining some useful web links. We would love your participation in today's workshop, and this can be done in a number of ways. Throughout the hour, we will ask you to take part in numerous polls which will appear on your screen and help us to interact with each other. If at any stage during the workshop you have a question, please type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Our colleagues Kathleen, Mairead and Trina are on hand to help answer any of your STEM queries and will endeavour to get to as many questions as possible. At the end of the workshop, you will be directed an evaluation form. We have made this as short and manageable as possible and would greatly appreciate your feedback as it will help to guide us for our upcoming workshops. A recording of the online workshop will be available on our website tomorrow and all web links mentioned will be on our website and Skullnet. We might take this opportunity to find out a little bit more about the teachers joining us today, as you will see your first poll appear on screen. Thank you so much for your participation with that poll and it's great to see so many different class levels represented here this evening. We would love to hear your thoughts on this evening's online workshop. If you would like to tweet during or after the workshop, please tag us using our account on screen and the hashtag STEM Air Skull. Similarly, if you try out any of the activities in the workshop, we would love if you could share them with us during the week. Before we begin today's online workshop, we would like to remind you all that the key component of our work is individualised school support. Applications for school support are now open on our website at the address on screen. Traditionally, advisors would have visited your school to provide this support, which enabled rich, bespoke professional development experiences. In line with current guidelines, our support is temporarily restricted to phone and online support. Our team of advisors are on hand to support your school in the areas of science, maths, STEM and team teaching. If you have not applied for support yet, we would be delighted to hear from you. Our key messages for this evening's online workshop. STEM integration means planning for learning experiences which explore maths and science skills and content meaningfully. STEM learning experiences should be linked to real world contexts. STEM tasks and learning experiences should provide opportunities to engage pupils in productive struggle, harnessing their natural curiosity to solve problems in the world around them. Inquiry-based and playful pedagogies can support pupil learning in STEM in all contexts and settings. All of the learning experiences which we will explore this evening have been chosen with the key considerations in light of COVID-19 restrictions in mind. When planning for teaching, learning and assessment, schools need to take into consideration their COVID response plan, COVID risk assessment and current public health advice. We hope that the activities in this workshop will be accessible for all and manageable and rewarding for both teachers and pupils. If you wish to seek further clarification, the relevant documentation for the safe return to school is on your screen now and can be accessed on the Department of Education website. Schools have been on quite a journey in the last seven months and the pace of change and adaptation has been rapid. When school buildings closed in March, our traditional face-to-face -face teaching became distance learning overnight. And the word emergency here will resonate with us all. Those of you who joined us for the STEM Sawalia series will remember the focus was on distance learning, 
Pupils were at, ho at home with their families and teachers were striving to provide learning experiences in the most challenging of times. We are thankfully now back in school where we are all most comfortable and schools across the country acknowledge the need for and opportunities provided by looking at a blended learning approach for pupils. Garrison and Kanuka describe blended learning as the thoughtful integration of classroom face-to-face -face experiences with online learning experiences. The date of this quotation is particularly notable. Blended learning is not a new phenomenon and exploring this approach can be rewarding for all. Blended learning models in line with our curriculum place the child at the centre of the learning process and encourage an inquiry approach. Blended learning provides enhanced opportunity for discovery, collaboration and active learning. Consider a maths or science topic that you might be exploring with your class this week. Have a look at the simple graphic on screen and I'll give you a moment to think about how you might explore this topic using a blended learning approach. The key element of the blended learning approach is that both the in-class activities and the out-of-class assignments work together and integrate to move the curriculum further. Blended learning can be delivered through a range of different approaches. Paul will be exploring some practical examples of blended learning experiences in the STEM context shortly, and we hope to highlight the advantages of utilising this approach to enrich learning experiences and strengthen homeschool links. If you would like to explore the area of blended learning further, our colleagues on the Digital Technologies team have developed significant resources on the PDST website. I'm absolutely delighted now to hand you over to my colleague Anne, who will guide us through our first section of the workshop, which will focus on talk and discussion. Over to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Michelle. In this section, we will cover a number of learning experiences and resources to support meaningful discussion in your classroom. We hope that these will provide great starting points for rich discourse amongst pupils in their pods. Some of these activities could also be used at the conclusion of a unit of work to consolidate pupil learning and to assess pupil understanding of a topic. We have taken great care to ensure that these are safe activities that require little or no resources and are accessible to all pupils in the primary school setting. Michelle has already drawn your attention in the introduction to the documents for guidance on returning to school. The curriculum guidance for primary school leaders and teachers returning to school identifies talk and discussion as a key learning approach to help children re-establish relationships with each other and, their, and the school staff. The guidelines also recommend that an emphasis, emphasis be placed on talk and discussion in mathematics. This will enable pupils to describe their learning, to express their understanding of particular concepts, and also to demonstrate an absence of understanding. We have linked our theme tonight to the science and maths curriculum, as you can see on this slide, while also exploring the opportunities for skills development within each activity. As with all our themes this evening, the green boxes re refer to the maths and content the maths content and skills and the blue, bo blue boxes highlight the science content and skills. I will give you a moment to have a look at these now. Our first activity in the talk and discussion section is data talk. The ability to work with, understand and use data has become an essential life skill. Data is all around us. According to Joe Bowler, 90% of the world's data has been created within the last two years. This is an astounding fact. Never before has it been so important for children to become data literate citizens. Some of you may be familiar with a methodology called number talks. Number talks are short, focused conversations between the teacher and children about how to solve a particular mental math problem. The focus is not on the correct answer, but on all of the possible methods of finding the solution. Through discussion and a collaborative approach, pupils can learn from each other's strategies. Similarly, a data talk is a five to 15 minute conversation where pupils are shown a data set and given an opportunity to discuss their thinking. Depending on the data set, data talk is suitable for all pupils. Armed with just two powerful questions, the teacher can craft a discussion about the data. 
What do you notice about the data and what do you wonder? Children may have observations about how a data set is structured, a question the data is answering, or perhaps, perhaps a question the data doesn't answer. Perhaps the data set and subsequent conversation could be a starting point for an investigation or for work on a particular topic. The UCubed website has some wonderful visuals which teachers could use as a starting point for data talk. Let's have a look at one of their really interesting data sets which could be used as a great stimulus for discussion across a range of subjects. This data sets out a person's water usage in a 24 hour period. Have a look at the visual and the key below. What do you notice? What do you wonder? I wonder how your water usage would compare to this person's. Now we realize this data is very unique in its representation and contains a large amount of information to digest after such a busy day. But there are a lot of interesting points which children would notice. Some interesting points that have come up with children include, I noticed she drinks seven glasses of water but only two cups of coffee. I noticed she got up really early in the morning, so it was probably a weekday. I wonder how much water the toilet uses when flushed. I wonder would her data look different now if she's washing her hands more. Teachers could also source some data sets which would capture pupils' imaginations. One such example might be sports statistics, ice cream flavours, or even the most popular baby names. The list really is endless. The final image here has been sourced from the website of the Central Statistics Office. This website is a treasure trove of fascinating infographics and data which could be another great starting point for data talks in the Irish context. Pupils might also like to bring in the data they find and are interested in. Data talks are intended to capture children's natural curiosity and encourage asking questions to help them understand the data-filled world in which we all live. The next activity we are going to look at in this evening's workshop is one which is guaranteed to promote some very lively discussion in your classroom. Odd one out activities are a really useful vehicle to encourage children to observe, question, argue and justify in the classroom. These activities also require children to listen to each other's ideas. The objective in these activities is not to arrive at one right answer because there is none. Rather, the objective is to enable children to identify similarities and differences between all of the objects. These activities also provide a wonderful opportunity for children to draw on their existing knowledge while connecting their ideas to form their arguments. Don't be one bit surprised if you find yourself saying out loud, I never thought of it like that before. Odd one out activities are really simple to prepare and organize. Using the interactive whiteboard, teachers can show the set of objects to the class who could discuss their ideas in their pods. The teacher could then take feedback and let the debate commence. The Explorify website is a great site for sourcing sets of images. Once you sign up for free, you can access a whole database of sets based on a particular topic. These sets could be used as a stimulus for a unit of work or as a means of assessing pupils' knowledge and understanding before and after a body of work. Let's have a look at an example based on the strand Living Things. Here we have three different plants, the agave plant, beech tree and the water lily. I want you to look really carefully at these plants. Which one do you think is the odd one out? We're going to launch a, a poll now where we're going to ask you to select which plant do you think is the odd one out? Okay, so thank you so much for participating in our poll this evening. The results are in. So even among our participants, it's clear tonight that we have a very wide, I suppose, variety of answers. While unfortunately, we can't hear the reasoning behind your choice. Why not try this with your pupils and see if any of them agree or disagree with you? The same approach could be used in the maths class. Numbers, angles, lines, shapes, clocks and toys, to name a few, 
could all be used to promote rich discussion where people share their thinking and use their mathematical language in a meaningful way. These examples are taken from the website wodb.ca to inspire you to get started. Let's have a look at the set of shapes on the slide. What questions could you ask to promote discussion in your class? Great starter question. Encourage children to discuss their ideas in their pods. Perhaps ask the children to revoice each other's ideas. Sarah, why did Dennis think the Pentagon was the odd one out? Frankie, can you explain why Joe thinks the rectangle is the odd one out? Kasula explorify, nilain chek skrifa er na hivana sha. Marshin is os, osh, anu sadak isha da gael skolana agas skolana gael takta. A useful extension activity is to ask children to find a reason why all the shapes could potentially be the odd one out. As all children's contributions are valued, these learning experiences also have a very positive effect on the classroom climate. To conclude the talk and discussion section of this workshop, we're going to turn our attention to problem solving. Problem solving is a very wide area of the maths curriculum and permeates many aspects of our daily lives. I'm sure you might have found that many pupils grapple with word problems in particular, as they might find it difficult to comprehend the language. They may struggle to understand the terminology or the phrasing of the question. Often the, pupil, the problem might seem out of context and removed from the pupil's own experience. In this section, we will provide you with an idea to inspire your pupils to get thinking and talking about the questions they would like to pose and solve. A headline story is the setting for a problem without the actual problem. A set of information presented in words or pictures. Pupils are then challenged to create some maths questions which could be posed and solved based on the information presented. By creating their own questions, children are using mathematical language in a meaningful context at their own level. The questions, pup the questions pupils create can be very revealing and could be a very useful assessment tool. These activities would also be very practical in the multi-grade setting as the children are all working at their own level with just one stimulus. Through effective questioning, the teacher can either support or extend pupils thinking. Let's have a look at some examples. Two children have worked together to come up with some questions based on this headline story. Neve gathered 25 autumn leaves. They've added in some extra information where necessary. The pupils then selected their favorite question to share with the class to solve. From this simple headline story, these pupils have created questions based on the strands, number and data. Here are a few more examples which could be used to start a discussion about creating maths problems. Don't forget on Twitter, we love to see examples of pupils' works, work, so please feel free to share any headline stories with us at PDST Primary STEM. Finally, headline stories can also take the form of photographs or drawings, which could be a very accessible stimulus for all pupils. Here is an example of a really simple image accompanied by some questions that pupils have created and published on post-its. We hope that headline stories will encourage children to don their maths eyes and be motivated to engage with problem solving in a really fun and meaningful way. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague Paul, who will take you through the blended learning section of this workshop. Thanks very much, Anne. Um, indeed, our second section in this evening's online workshop is called Blended Learning in STEM. Michelle has already taken us through the role and importance of blended learning in the current circumstances. But I would like to take some time in this section to focus on and consider STEM through blended learning. In this section, we will take some time to look at three different STEM learning experiences that can lend themselves very well to a blended learning approach. They are making, making shadows, tinfoil boats, and the egg drop challenge. Similar to the image you saw in the previous section, Blended learning in STEM allows for teachers to plan for learning experiences which explore maths and science skills and content meaningfully. Please take a moment now to consider these suggested integrated strands and skills. Our first activity in this section is called Making Shadows. Shadows have always been something fascinating for children 
whether it has been looking for them in the school playground, making them with a torch at home, or sometimes maybe even being a little afraid of them. Often on a bright and sunny day, you'll find children noticing and perhaps even chasing their shadow around the schoolyard. Why not engage this enthusiasm and natural curiosity by exploring this topic further with them, firstly in school, and then consider how this area might be extended through activities in the home. In this activity, we will make links with different aspects of the science curriculum and the maths curriculum, namely light and materials in science and shape and space in maths, while also ensuring to consider which STEM skills we are developing throughout the task. Perhaps in school, the playground really is a great starting point with the younger classes, where children might experiment through play with their own shadow or the shadows of their friends. Guiding questions for them could include, can you make your shadow taller or shorter? What happens if you run or jump? Can you work with a friend to make different shapes? Perhaps older children can begin wondering about shadows a little more deeply and can consider various questions that they may have about shadows. They might, for example, already know that the sun is involved in creating their shadow, but may wonder why their shadow appears to behave in certain ways. Why not encourage them to think up some of their own questions as they explore their shadow through play? They might wonder, for example, why they cannot see their eyes in their own shadow, but if they turn, turn to the side, they can see their nose. Perhaps children could be encouraged to, to decide on some testable questions based on their explorations to try out at home later that evening or at some stage during the week. Testable questions are those that can be answered through hands-on investigation by the pupil, such as, do different light sources make lighter or darker shadows? Or, do transparent materials have shadows at all? Some questions that children may have will not be testable questions, but they might be able to research the answer to these questions themselves at a later point. In order to investigate some of the testable questions the children may ask, such as the list shown here, they will have to carry out investigations either in class or at home. Once a child has written a list of testable questions, it is important for them to decide on which of the questions they will focus on, as you can see here. Whether the children decide to investigate making shadow puppets, as can be seen in this activity available on Explorify, or they are wondering about what shapes they can make using shadows, such as this wonderful question from Enrich. This type of thinking provides an excellent opportunity to engage in blended learning, combining the investigations originally done in the schoolyard with some small scale investigations on the child's focused, testable question at home. Perhaps some children may wish to use an inquiry sheet, such as this one as seen here, available on our website in English, August Oskwelga, to help focus their investigation that little bit further. This task really is, has an endless list of possibilities. Once the child has decided on which testable question is going to be the focus for their investigation at home, it is important to consider how their work at home will be recorded. Some children may be in a position to record their work with a photograph or a video. They may even be able to add it to a digital portfolio on Seesaw or Google Classroom while other children may wish to write a short description or draw a picture of what happened when they tested their question. Some children may find it challenging at first to generate some testable questions. One way to encourage conversations and discussion that will lead to children making their own testable questions is the idea of a concept cartoon. The idea of concept cartoons originally came from Brenda Kyo and Stuart Naylor, as a way to encourage children to consider different opinions and perspectives relating to a particular scientific or STEM topic. You will notice that in this particular example, that a blank speech bubble has also been included to allow the pupil an opportunity to verbalize their own idea or interpretation of the investigation, other than the options given already. Our second activity this evening in the blended learning in STEM section of the workshop is called Tin Foil Boats. Tin Foil Boats is a very easily resourced and accessible STEM activity for all ages, which essentially involves the pupils designing and making a boat from tin foil, then testing their boat to see what it can hold before it sinks. 
Of course, different parameters and rules can be used for different class levels, but all you really need is some tin foil and some marbles, coins, or similar small objects. In this activity, we will again make links with different aspects of the science curriculum and the maths curriculum, namely forces in science and capacity in maths, while also ensuring once again to consider which STEM skills we are developing throughout the task. This activity also naturally lends itself, as you can imagine, to asking some interesting and thought-provoking engineering questions throughout. Tinfoil boats is a design and make activity, and it is important to consider the four stages of the design and make process when planning for such an activity. Exploring, planning, making, and finally evaluating. I will briefly take you through each of these stages now in terms of this particular activity. In the exploring stage, pupils will take some time to consider the materials they have available to them. Perhaps they will get to see or hold some tin foil and also some of the objects that will be placed inside the boat, as can be seen here. In the current climate, teachers may prefer to invite children to work on this stage of the process at home so that they are fully prepared to come into school the next day to begin the planning stage. In the planning stage, children take some time to draw or sketch the plan for their boat or their multiple boats. This, of course, should incorporate age appropriate requirements where you feel it necessary. For example, should the pupil's design include measurements on it? Should they draw a number of different designs as you can see here? After the planning stage, pupils can be encouraged to bring their plans to life at home in the making stage of the process. This step can sometimes be a frustrating one, but it can also be very rewarding. Perhaps this is even an opportunity to involve parents or guardians in the design and make process. Depending on your school and class, once again, you may choose various approaches with regard to the final evaluating stage of the process. Some pupils, depending on their age and ability, may wish to write about the results of their experiment, while others might take photographs and videos. Either way, though, the children will hopefully return to class following the experiment and the investigation at home with some form of evaluation of their process. Questions for this stage in the classroom could include, what would you change if you did this again? Which shape boat worked the best for you? What was the most marbles that your boat could hold? If you would like to find out more about this activity, it can be found in our measures manual on page 151. This task is available as Berle, August as Gwelge, and a link will be provided at the end of tonight's workshop. As well as that, as can be seen here, a version of this activity is available in the library of activities on Seesaw for use in a blended learning approach. To finish this section, we will now look at a short video made by a fifth class pupil at home in her own kitchen of this design and make process in action. As you watch this video, see can you spot the different stages of the design and make process. video such as this could be used in the classroom to inspire some testable questions at the beginning of the investigation and maybe lead to further investigations and experiments. Our third and final activity in this section of tonight's online workshop is called the egg drop challenge. This activity is perhaps a more advanced design and make task 
as it allows for a wide range of creative and imaginative approaches to solving a problem in a blended learning approach. The problem that the pupils are trying to solve is, how do we stop the egg from breaking when it's dropped from a height? For younger children, we can use a small object instead of an egg to prevent too much of a mess being made. In this activity, we will once again make links with different aspects of the science curriculum and the maths curriculum, namely energy and forces in science and measures in maths, while also ensuring to consider which STEM skills were developing throughout the task. We will also take some time to consider how technology plays a role in this particular activity. The egg drop challenge can begin in a wide number of ways. Younger children might talk about the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty and wonder how they could stop him from breaking into lots of pieces after his big fall. For older children, it might be nice to generate their interest in this activity in class by showing a video of a parachute descending to the ground. Pupils might wonder about how a parachute works and why it is shaped the way it is. Other pupils might wonder about how it protects the person wearing it and how it helps, land, helps them to land safely on the ground. Following this, children might be given a list of materials that they can choose from, such as this, and then over a week or two can spend some time at home planning, designing and making their parachute or their container that will safely bring their small object or egg to the ground. All throughout the design and make process, once again, it is important for children to document their work in a way that you deem most appropriate for their age and their ability. Here, you can see uh, some photos of the process in action in a fifth and sixth class multigrade in a school in Dublin. A handy tip that was learned through experience was to place the egg inside a small food or freezer bag before placing it inside the container or parachute that will drop so that if it does break, it doesn't spill everywhere. As you can see, during this process, the pupils are using their STEM skills as listed here, experimenting, problem solving, observing, and reasoning, among many, many others. This activity is explored in greater detail in this wonderful resource, Real Science for Young Scientists, which was produced by DCU St. Patrick's College. There are two similar activities, parachutes and candy bomber, which can be found from page 45 to page 48 of this book, alongside many other great science and STEM tasks. This resource is free to access. Check it out at the link provided at the end of tonight's workshop. And that brings us to the end of this section of tonight's online workshop. I will now hand you over to Michelle to take us through some questions that have been coming in on the Q&A this evening. I hear that we've had a good number of questions in so far, Michelle. We have indeed, Paul. Thank you so much for that really interesting section. Um, thank you again to Kathleen and Mairead and Trina who are busy answering questions on the Q&A for us. We really appreciate it. Um, we have one message in, all right, that I'd like to highlight from Fiona. And Fiona is a newly appointed principal. And Fiona's question is about school support. And she's wondering, could we explain the service provided a little bit more and tell her about the cost encouraged for same? So Fiona, thank you so much for your question and congratulations on your appointment also. Uh, school support is provided free of charge by the PDST and you can apply online for your school. By completing a short form, you'll get an opportunity to highlight up to three areas of priority for your school for this school year. After that, your school will be assigned to advisors in the relevant areas who will contact you directly to plan the support depending on your school needs. So we would be really delighted to hear from you, Fiona, and we look forward to supporting your school. Similarly, we have a question from Shona. I hope you don't mind, Dan, but I'm going to direct that to you. Mm -hmm. So Shona is just wondering about the name of the website where you accessed the maths mm -hmm. odd one out activities and in your section, if you wouldn't mind recapping on that for us. No problem, Michelle. Thanks for your question, Shona. That website is wodb.ca. So a really, really easy way to remember that is WODB stands for which one doesn't belong. Um, but don't be worried if you miss any of the websites or the resources, because at the end of tonight's session, we're going to put up a QR code. So if you have your camera ready, the QR code will take you directly to the, the list of, of websites. But other than that, they'll be available on our website from this evening. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Anne. And thank you, Fiona and Shona and everybody else who's sending in questions. We'll now pass you back to Marion, who's going to take you through STEM on a shoestring. Over to you, Marion. Michelle. 
In this section, STEM on a shoestring, we're going to look at three STEM activities that will provide wonderful opportunities for talk and discussion, blended learning, and working collaboratively. The playful learning approach adopted will engage your pupils, stimulate their creativity and curiosity, and provide a stimulus for further inquiry. The three activities that we will explore are Just a Minute, Paper Helicopters, and a Bubble Investigation. All three activities only require only a few readily available resources, therefore making it possible for pupils to have their own individual equipment. Similar to the previous poplets, this theme allows for teachers to plan for learning experiences which explore maths and science skills and content meaningfully. Our first activity, Just a Minute, explores the concept of time. In school, pupils study two distinct aspects of time. The first is reading and telling the time, and the second aspect is the measuring of time intervals. As teachers, we often find children struggle with the concept of time. This difficulty arises for a number of reasons, including the fact that although it is time as a measure, it is unlike other measures such as length, capacity, weight, money, and area, insofar as it cannot be seen or touched. Another issue with measuring time intervals is that we are told that time passes at a constant rate and yet does not feel like that in direct experience. For many of us, five minutes in the dentist's waiting room can feel longer than an hour spent in the company of good friends. Children often hear phrases such as, just a minute, or I'll be with you in a minute. In reality, how long is that minute? 20 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 20 minutes, maybe longer. Just a minute is a great challenge that helps children develop their understanding of how long a minute actually is. For this activity, you will need a way of timing a minute and paper and pencil for recording. You'll find this activity in our measures manual, along with many other suggested learning experiences for the teaching of time suitable for your class level. For example, who finishes first and clapping time on page 217 and page 218 may be more suitable for infant classes. To introduce this activity, you might like to read the story Five Minutes Peace by Jill Murphy. Ask the pupils if they think five minutes is a long time. What do they think they could do in five minutes? Establish with your pupils that there are 60 seconds in a minute and then ask them to close their eyes and to count to a minute in their head. Instruct them to raise their hand once they think that a minute has passed. Using a phone or tablet, you can record the split times. Once everyone has raised their hand, ask your pupils to explain the strategy they use to count to a minute. This time for talk and discussion will provide pupils with the opportunity to explain their thinking and to hear the ideas of others. Your observation of pupils' responses throughout this will help you to assess their understanding of how long a minute is. Next, ask your pupils to think of activities that, could that they could complete in a minute. The use of think, pair, share might be a useful strategy here. To ensure, to ensure pupils spend an adequate amount of time thinking before discussing their ideas with their partner, maybe set a timer on the board for a minute for thinking time. Once the pupils have had the opportunity to share their ideas with their partner, record all their ideas on the board. Help the pupils to identify the ones that could be done in the classroom while sitting or standing at their seat and which ones would have to be done in the PE hall, playground and or at home. Select an activity to begin with, for example, writing your name. Just a matter of interest, how many times do you think you could write your name in a minute? Let's do a quick poll. Thanks everyone for submitting your estimates. Maybe you'd like to try this activity after the workshop or tomorrow with your class. As you can see, Anne and I tried out this activity. Through questioning, you could support your pupils in analyzing and interpreting the results. How many times did Marion write her name? How many times did Anne? Why do you think Anne got a higher result? The results from this activity could be used as stimulus for further inquiry. 
Does the sharpness of the pencil matter? If Anne used Marion's blunt pencil, would she get a different result? If everyone used a crayon, would we get a different result? Why do you think that is? This is an opportunity to explore the effect of friction. Allow your pupils to try out the activities on the list. Ask them to make an estimate before each one and to keep a record of what they could achieve in a minute every time. The results of the activities could be recorded in the pupils' maths journal, providing another source of assessment. There are many activities that can, that can be completed within a minute that could form the basis of an inquiry that your pupils could investigate at home. For example, if we take the activity of bouncing a ball, pupils could investigate whether they get the same result if they change the type of ball they use, or what would happen if they change the surface the ball is bounced on. Pupils should be encouraged to record their findings. This can be done with words, pictures, symbols, or by creating a short video explaining what they wanted to investigate, how they carried out their investigation, and what their findings were. The next activity that we're going to look at is paper helicopters. In this activity, your pupils will explore how some things fall and how changing certain variables such as the size of the rotor blades, the shape of the rotor blades or the weight of a paper helicopter affects the way a helicopter spins. For this activity, you will need a selection of paper and card, scissors, paper clips and a template for the helicopters. Our friends at Discover Primary Science and Maths have a classroom activity pack on paper helicopters which includes a template for two sizes of paper helicopter. They also have a maths extension pack which highlights the numerous aspects of maths that can be explored throughout this, that can be explored through this activity. This rich task supports pupils in developing both their science and mathematical skills. It also helps them to understand fair testing by changing only one variable at a time. For example, only changing the shape of the rotor blades or only changing the length of the rotor blades. Sycamore seeds can be used as a trigger to start pupils thinking about how the rotor blades on a helicopter spins. Recently, you may have had the opportunity to take your pupils on a nature trail where they gathered some sycamore seeds. Pupils can either experiment in the playground or at home, throwing the seeds in the air and observing what happens. If possible, pupils should have a few seeds of varying sizes and should be encouraged to notice that the different sized seeds act differently to one another when thrown in the air. Elicit from the pupils what they think is happening. If you went to this activity at a different time of the year, when sycamore seeds aren't available, you could use a video to stimulate pupils' curiosity. along with some guiding questions could be set as a task for home. This opportunity for blended learning could provide pupils with time to reflect on what they have observed and to formulate their own hypothesis about what is happening in the video before embarking on experimenting and investigating with paper helicopters in school the next day. To help pupils to begin to understand the role air resistance plays in making a paper helicopter spin, Drop a flat piece of paper and a scrunch up piece of paper and observe how they fall. Do it from different heights. Each time, ask the pupils to predict what will happen and what they observe. Air resistance keeps the flat piece of paper in the air longer. Next, allow the pupils to use the templates to make two different sized paper helicopters. Give them time to play with them, dropping them from different heights, encouraging them to observe what is happening each time. If you do not have adequate space in your classroom for this activity, you could do it in the PE hall or playground. Teacher questioning is very important as it helps guide discovery. For example, what did you notice with the spins for each helicopter? Did they spin clockwise or anti-clockwise? Can you make it rotate in the opposite direction? Does the height you drop it from affect its flight? Instruct the pupils to add another paper clip to the helicopter. Does the weight change the spin? Next, get the pupils to drop the two different sized helicopters at the same time. Which one reaches the ground first? What do they observe? Why do you think the small one lands first? Through discussion, pupils will come to understand that the small one lands first because there's less surface area to experience air resistance. 
people to be encouraged to make variations on the design by changing the length of the rotor blades, the type of paper or card used, and the number of paper clips attached. People should be afforded the opportunity to discuss their ideas with their peers. With inquiry-based learning, our goal is open inquiry, where pupils formulate their own questions to be investigated. In the previous section of this workshop, Paul talked about testable questions. Here are some testable questions about paper helicopters written by a sixth class pupil. She identified a testable question that she was going to use as a basis for an investigation to do at home. Will a smaller version of my helicopter spin differently? Pupils should be supported in school to plan for their at-home investigation. As you know, assessment is an integral part of teaching and learning. Annotated drawings is one assessment tool that helps us as teachers to make judgments about our pupils' understanding of a given concept. So what are annotated drawings? Well, as you're aware, drawings allow learners to express their ideas. Annotated drawings include words as well as pictures and can be a useful extension of drawings. They allow users to include more de detail and can compensate for a lack of graphic skills. Annotated drawings are not finished products, but are a snapshot of thinking at a point in time. They can be used at the start of a lesson to elicit predictions from pupils, help them to access their prior knowledge and reveal any held misconceptions. They can be used during a lesson to record thinking, or they can be used following a lesson. This is an example of an annotated drawing done by a pupil prior to a lesson on paper helicopters. And here is an annotated drawing from the same pupil after engaging in the paper helicopter activity. For our final activity this evening, we want to re-establish bubbles as something joyful in our lives. This activity is for pupils of all ages and for adults who are young at heart. As with the previous two activities, a playful approach is required, as well as lots of opportunity for talk and discussion. For this activity, you will need some pipe cleaners for our bubble ones, washing up liquid and water for the bubble mixture, as well as a container for each child so they can have their own individual bubble mix. The first part of this activity could be done in the classroom. However, you might consider doing it outside as it can get very messy. Begin by asking the pupils, how do you make bubbles? Ask them to think about how they would make bubbles without blowing and discuss their ideas with their partner. Provide the pupils with time to try out these ideas. What did they notice? Did it matter which direction they moved the bubble wand in? Did one movement create better bubbles than another? Next, go outside where the pupils can blow bubbles. Encourage them to try to make different size bubbles. What happens if you blow harder? What happens if you blow gently? Ask the, teachers to ch ask the children to change the size of the loop on their bubble wands. Does a bigger loop make bigger bubbles? Can a smaller loop only make small bubbles? People should talk about their ideas and what they've observed. They should be encouraged to think of their own inquiry questions about bubbles that they could investigate in school or at home. For example, what other materials could I use to make a bubble wand? What shape is a bubble? Will different shaped bubble wands make different shaped bubbles? This is an opportunity for pupils to construct various 2D shapes and to use the language of 2D and 3D shapes in context. Remember to always ask pupils to predict what they think will happen before investigating. Enish Thagyar Skan Anagun, Renabertra Haraka A. Kanu Imshkrudu Avinu. And thanks for your Moscow piano of Fairy Liquid of the Ziska. And shouldn't be on the slot piano. On the Ziska bag and tied a cover. Do some may not pipe cleaners came. August do some may have mask on cane. I'll talk for a different air gox slot. August hate him or a long more gone. The um in tuck a gun. Grievemar sees the turkey. Farer near Afric Croton slot Croton Bulgon. How in Salem, Octomay Geary, Osmok, Kerda Hardy, and Mosku Sodom slot 3D. How the cap and shave. 
Clark Galore, we will now head back over to Michelle, who will take us through the conclusion of this evening's webinar. Thanks very much, Marion. Just before we begin the conclusion, I'd just like to say thanks so much to the participants who are actually sending in resource suggestions. It's really, really helpful on the Q&A. So uh, there was a really nice website just shared there by Aaron called informationisbeautiful.net and Aaron is advocating its use for a data talk. So I have just up uploaded that to the web resources for today's online workshop. So you'll be able to access that later. And thanks so much for the resource suggestions. It's really useful for us to learn from each other. We'll just revise the key messages for today's online workshop. STEM integration means planning for learning experiences which explore maths and science skills and content meaningfully. STEM learning experiences should be linked to real world contexts. STEM tasks and learning experiences should provide opportunities to harness pupils' natural curiosity to solve problems in their immediate learning environments. And finally, inquiry-based and playful pedagogies can support pupil learning in STEM in all contexts and settings. If you wish to avail of the online supports from our team, please look at the PDST website and click on the STEM tab at the top of the page. Our friends at Skullnet have a dedicated page for the STEM Air Skull webinar series, where you will find all of the resources mentioned in tonight's workshop. I'm actually just going to take you to the site for a second because they did a fantastic job there today, as you can see. Um, if you go to the science section of Skullnet and click on STEM Air Skull, you have a link there to book future workshops. And also the workshop resources from tonight's workshop are underneath STEM in a bubble. When you click on workshop one resources, you will be able to access all of the activities which were highlighted on tonight's workshop. So thank you to Aoife and the team at Skullnet for organising that. And I'm sure you'll enjoy checking that out in your own time. The digital technologies team have a dedicated page blended learning supports which you can access in your own time. The resources aim to support teachers when engaging in a blended learning approach to teaching learning and assessment by providing practical suggestions and case studies. The web links for today's online workshop will be on our website tomorrow. If you would like to access them now, please use the QR code on your screen. So you can take a photograph of this depending on the device that you have and it will bring you directly to the web resources for tonight's online workshop. All of these will be on our website tomorrow and also on the Skullnet page. So if you don't have a device, there's no problem. If you're feeling suitably inspired by some of the STEM activities outlined tonight, our friends in NUI Galway have asked us to highlight the real life science programme. The annual schools competition is currently inviting entries for short science videos and they have eight suggested themes to inspire you on their website. Check out reallifescience.com where there are fantastic prizes on offer for the successful schools. Make sure you share your videos with us on Twitter. We are delighted to announce that the fifth edition of STEM Sweeta will be published on October 15th and aims to provide supports for teaching mathematics, science and STEM in current circumstances. Anyone who is already subscribed to receive STEM Sweenta does not need to register again. However, if there are any of our participants this evening who have not subscribed and wish to receive the next edition of STEM Sweenta into their inbox, please follow the link in the poster to subscribe. This link will also be made available on our website if you wish to access it once the workshop has concluded. Just like to take this opportunity again to remind you of um, that school support is open. If you'd like to visit www.pst.ie forward slash school support. And again, we are happy to assist you in any way we can. So please apply for support entering your role number and password on our website. Our second workshop, STEM in the Open Air, will take place on Tuesday the 20th of October. We will be exploring the learning opportunities for STEM that the outdoors provide. If you are interested in exploring STEM trails, investigations and challenges, you will not want to miss this one. Registration is now open on the PDST website. And that brings us to the end of our first live online workshop from the PDST primary STEM series, STEM or Skull. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have and that you've one or two ideas or resources to explore in your classroom. Thank you to all of our team for the work in designing this workshop and a special thanks to Kathleen, Raid, and Trina working behind the scenes this evening. We would really appreciate your feedback on tonight's online workshop so when the webinar finishes you will be directed to an evaluation form and we would really appreciate your participation with the same. Thanks so much again for joining us after a busy day at school and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Slán live galair.